Hi, I'm Rachel and I'm a pastor and worship leader for Banner of Love Ministries. Today I want to share with you a, a brief tutorial on how to lead piano in any given key and how to improvise in those keys. For worship piano, we just play simple chords. So I'm playing uh, the full chord with my right hand. So that's, that's C. And then with my left hand, I'm playing the bass, the bass notes. So the root of that chord is C. So I'm playing the C with this hand. And if you want, you can play the octave with that hand. You can, you can reach that way. So you're playing the full chord with your right hand and you're playing the bass notes with your left hand. And the other thing is your, your left hand is kind of like a bass guitar. So uh, bass is a great instrument because you're also playing the, the, the root notes of the chords, but you're also playing rhythm. You're kind of like a cross between a guitar and the drums. So this hand is where your rhythm is. So, so you're not like going, playing the chord a lot with this hand. You're more, you can kind of be controlling the rhythm with this hand. I'm playing the chords here with my right hand. Anywhere, I'm just gonna stay right here. I'm just gonna wait here. And I'm playing the, the bass notes with my left hand. You're not going anywhere. I'm not going anywhere. I'm just gonna stay right here. I'm just gonna wait here. So when you put it together, you're not going anywhere. See how I'm playing the rhythm with my left hand. I'm just gonna stay right here. I'm just gonna wait here. So see, you can play less with your right hand if you just keep the bass going. As long as you're playing the root notes with your with your left hand, uh, you're not going anywhere. I'm not going anywhere. I'm just gonna wait right here. I'm just gonna wait here. You're free to play what you want with your right hand. Oh, you're not going anywhere. I'm not going anywhere. I'm just going to stay right here. I'm just going to wait here. So I'm just playing the chord with my left hand. The root notes of the chords. I'm following that on my music. But my, my right hand is free to play what it wants. See that? So you can play simple. You're not going anywhere. I'm not going anywhere. I'm just going to stay right here. I'm just going to wait here. Or you can play more melodic things based on what your role is on the team. So if you're a worship leader and you're mainly singing, you're going to want to play more simple things just to support the vocals and let your other team members kind of carry the, the song and play all the little the extra little bits, right? But if you're an accompanist, you're going to want to maybe play other bits and do some... Um, spontaneous singing or whatever, uh, it's helpful to be able to improvise in any given key. So how do we do that? Let's look at that. It's really important as a musician for worship uh, to educate yourself in music theory and just basic, basic uh, playing of your instrument. But that musicianship alone is not worship. Uh, but it facilitates that. So that's your homework. That's not your worship leader's job. That's not your pastor's job to teach you that. You need to practice and hone the actual theory and, and mechanics of your instrument at home. 
So look up on YouTube or, or some other means or if you have books or somebody to help you, uh, just the basics of chords. So in a chord, to free your hand up, I'm playing it with my first, my third, and my fifth. That's a C chord, okay? So you need to learn to play in a key uh, and the chords in, in each part of that. So scales are just playing each note in the key. So it's important, go find what your scales are and work through that. So for the key of C, that's two octaves, right? Two octaves. All right, and there's loads of videos that can show you how to play that um, and what fingering to use uh, to play faster and all of that. That's a skill you're gonna develop over time. But for the sake of this video, I just wanna look at the key. So notice how in the key of C, for instance, right, I'm just using all these white notes. In one octave, it's only white notes. Different keys are gonna use different sequences of the black notes as well, but let's just look at C for instance. As long as I'm playing any of these notes here, I am playing in the key of C. I'm putting it in C, we're only gonna use the, the white notes here, all right? So let's look at that. Stay right here, I'm just gonna wait here, you're not going anywhere. So you can play simple chords, right? Notice how those are all, all the notes that I'm touching are white, because it's in the key of C. C is a very easy key for playing at the beginning in piano, right? So as long as I'm playing these white notes, I'm in the key of C, I'm fine. So I can play the full chords like I was just playing, right? Or I can improvise. As long as I'm playing the root notes with this hand, right? You're not going anywhere. I'm not going anywhere. I'm just gonna stay right here. I'm just gonna wait here. Then this hand is free to improvise, right? So you can play a mixture of the keys, of the, sorry, the chords. I'm just gonna wait here. Right? I can play, I can just play. Right? That's, I'm just being ridiculous, but the point is, it, it doesn't sound terrible because it's the right notes. So if you learn your keys, you, you can feel much more competent um, and, and, and confident in, in playing, improvising things, because even if you make a mistake, it's gonna be, it's gonna be within a, a key and it's not gonna lead the whole band wrong. Again, as long as you're playing the root notes that are following the chord progression, you're not gonna throw off the whole team. And you have the ability to simplify or add things or just play the chords or play a little melodic bit as you so like. the trick to this is learning keys. So we just played the key of C. So, right, all those are in the key of C. But let's look at other keys, right? So you learn your key of D, right? You hear that? That's not right. Not right. Ah, there we go, right? So what do we learn? Those are in the key of C, right? There we go. So as long as you're playing those notes, it's gonna sound right. So the key of D, right? Let's let's put this song into D. Pour out, I'll turn back to praise, right? So that was D. Let's look at E. Right? 
every blessing you pour out I'll turn back to praise right not right no no ah there we go so we see so you just have to memorize your keys and look it's really helpful for your fingers to practice the scales right so that you can play it faster than that that is a trickier one for your fingering but again the more you practice each of the scales and each of the keys you're going to feel more comfortable so so then you can improvise on that as long as you play all the notes in that scale you're going to be fine every blessing you pour out i'll turn back to praise right so let's look at another key F. that's an f chord right these are all the, the chords in that song but it's all based on the the scale of f right does that sound right no so again a lot of this is by practicing by ear All right, so we only have one black note in that. No. Nope. See that? So as long as you're playing those. Every blessing you pour out, I'll turn back to praise. So that's your one. Praise, that's why it's a B flat. Right, see that? So see how I'm free to play any of those? You could do G. Let's look at G. That's the key I play at this end. To praise. And when the darkness closes. I'm just being ridiculous. See how see how that wasn't in the key, right? So there's one black note here, it's an F sharp. Right? So that as long as you're playing all those white ones, but that, you're you're not gonna play that. That's why it's a D D major chord there, right? Every blessing you see that? You pour out I Ah, uh, see? See? See how that was wrong? So see, you can just kind of mess around with that. Pra the best the best example I got, I grew up playing classical music and um, I had a friend who was a jazz pianist and he just told, I said, how do you play with such confidence and such freedom in what you, what you play? He said, you just have to learn your keys. So just sit at home and practice playing in a key and walking it up and doing your scales and all of that to maybe the chord progression of a song. So Blessed be the name of the I can I can play that wasn't the right chord progression in that song but look you can play as long as you're playing within that key it's not going to be terrible and so again that's what I'm saying if you're leading a band it's really important that you keep the roots the the chord progression here in in this hand because that that will keep your band in in check because they're going to be confused which note am I playing where am I going but as long as you learn to lead your band from this hand you're gonna be fine to improvise on this hand. But I'm not saying you should play all these crazy scales the entire time you're playing worship, but it's useful to know how to work around those keys because it's gonna give you freedom to play more than just like your little chord thing every time. It's gonna sound very choppy if you're just going, Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be your name. Right, that's the rhythm. Blessed be. So there might be a time when you're using that, like for emphasis, right? Like with the drummer. But if you're playing that the whole time, or if you're just playing 
Uh, say you're trying to make the song bigger, but you're just playing, Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be. Now, there's a time for that. But if that's the whole song, it's going to lack depth and dynamic. So it helps to be able to diversify what you're playing so that it adds interest. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be your name. Blessed be the name of the Lord. See how you can build it? Be your glorious name. Oh, you give and take away. You give and take away. Say you're trying to make it really big, right? Way my heart will choose to say. Oh, blessed be your name, blessed be the name of the Lord, blessed be your name, blessed be the name of the Lord, blessed be your glorious name. So see, we can shape a song and give it interest by all of that. So, so find those keys, look up online, find your chord progression, start with C, try practicing and improvising in C. That's one of the easiest, easiest keys just for piano, just to learn and feel confident that you're going to sound good to some degree because it's in that key, right? Um, and then work from there, practice doing your scales. Find scales, lessons on scales, find lessons on fingering for scales so that you can do it without looking. Right? And then, and raise that. Right? Do it in each one. Right? And practice then playing all those songs in those different keys and feeling confident that you can find your way in the dark uh, now you're probably not going to use all of those keys, but again, it's it's good good to be aware of. Uh, and this is where in other videos I'm saying if you're a worship leader and you're you're singing while you're playing your instrument, uh, the most important thing is to become comfortable in the keys that you're using all the time. So I I typically use the key of G. So you can just learn to improvise and be comfortable playing in those keys and uh, it's going to make all of your worship time a lot easier. Go find books or find YouTube videos or resources. Just teach yourself the keys. Find the main key that you're going to be leading in most of the time if you're a vocalist and uh, you've seen other videos on determining your range and how to pick those keys. Uh, find at least those two, three keys that you're going to be playing in most of the time and make sure you're very proficient in them. Practice your scales, uh, find your fingering for that and try to work on your speed and your fingering uh, for those given keys and then just practice improvising. Um, you know, have, have your own worship time with the Lord and just, you don't always have to sing. You can, you can play and let your, let your piano sing and have worship uh, to the Lord. It's really useful for um, spontaneous worship and for uh, say there's a part in the song where you're giving a prophetic exhortation or, or somebody speaking or whatever and uh, you need to play background uh, music to accompany that uh, and, and uh, add to the flow of, of what the Holy Spirit's doing or ministering in a meeting. It's really useful to not just have to play the chords of a song. It's useful to be able to improvise and, and play music beautifully within a key that can easily then be transitioned back into whatever worship song you're playing. So I hope this gives you some confidence to get you started in playing around and not just feeling like you're playing choppy uh, chords or, or things like that. Hope that really helps and thanks for watching.